Hello, my name is Bojan Mitov, the president of Mitov Software, and in this session we'll cover functional programming in Delphi XE5. As Delphi developers, we all know that at the beginning there was Pascal, and it was algorithms plus data structures equals programs. Then in the 90s came the Big Bang, object-oriented programming with Delphi, and it changed algorithms plus objects now equaled programs. The object-oriented programming revolutionized the way we define and work with data in our programs. We still, however, continue to write algorithms largely the same way as we were used to with structural programming. Then a quiet revolution began. With Delphi 2010, for first time, anonymous methods were introduced and that allowed us to start using extensively functional programming. And this promises to revolutionize the way we write and implement code. Up to now, we have been writing in procedural manner how the code will be executed. That is now slowly getting replaced by declarative notion of writing code and thus making writing code very similar to the way we define and work with objects. So functional programming allows us to implement programs by simply declaring both the execution and the data structure of our programs. What are the advantages of functional programming? With functional programming, instead of describing how we'll achieve something step by step, we just need to describe what we want to achieve. Functional programming is also very well fit for parallel code execution. It produces significantly shorter code and it is very easy to maintain and expand the existing code base. We can do functional programming using traditional Delphi or any other procedural or object-oriented language. However, we will face the same type of problems we faced when we were trying to do object-oriented programming with structural languages. It is possible by writing a lot of code and it practically always will produce worse code than in traditional programming. So obviously it is not a practical solution when using traditional Delphi or object-oriented languages. To demonstrate this, I have created a couple of test projects. In them, I have declared a record with test data and I have created a small procedure populating list of such records with test data. In my test project, I have declared a generic list of this test type. I am creating instance, populating the test data, and when the form is destroyed, destroying the list. If I want to print all of the data in the list, in traditional procedural or object-oriented programming, I will have to write a loop and tell step-by-step step what needs to be done in order the data to be printed, which is loop through each element of the list and then add this element to my memo. Let's run the project. This is how we program in non-functional programming languages. In my second project, I will do the same. However, I will use traditional object-oriented Delphi to achieve the same following functional programming design. To do this, I have declared my own list. I have declared the procedure in this list for each, which takes as parameter a pointer to a member procedure taking instance of the generic type of the list. This is effectively a Delphi closure or event as many people know them. In the implementation of for each, we'll loop through the list and we'll call this event. The test code in this case looks very similar. Again, we're creating uh, the list, destroying it, and when we want to print it, 
instead of saying how we're gonna loop through all of the items, we simply say which method should be called for each item. And we need to implement the method which we will be calling, in this case, print item. We can now run it and see the results. And there are what we expected. We have written a functional program using traditional Delphi methods. Immediately, some issues start to emerge. First, this will work only with member procedures such as print item. What if we want to call a global method? Well, we're out of luck. Furthermore, in case, as with our project 3, we want to do something different than normal printing, as example, print only items with a certain number, we will have to implement a brand new separated method. This is hardly practical and will result in very rapid code bloat and will get out of hand. Let's take a look at what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to print only items where value 1 of our test record has a value of 7. There are a couple of options we still have in traditional Delphi to solve this problem. Let's explore them. In my next project, we'll try to solve the problem by introducing a member variable for the value we want to print. And then in my print some items function will compare to this member variable. We get the right result, however, we have a lot of issues. First, we are introducing extra member variables which will stay most of the time as part of our object and will serve no purpose other than taking memory out of our application. Number two, which is even bigger problem, is that this code now is not thread safe because if one thread executes this code and then another thread executes similar code and modifies f value in order to perform a different for each, the two will collide and will get garbage result. So this is a bad solution. There is another solution which is better and this is to declare a helper class. In this case, for this helper class, we we'll have pointer to the form, the value we're searching for, we we'll have constructor, member procedure, which we can call, then we'll create instance of that helper class, we'll execute for each, passing the print item procedure as a callback, and finally, we'll free the helper class. This works, However, the code significantly increases. It also forces us to remember to add try finally section and free the helper class. We can simplify this somewhat and I have demonstrated that in my next project. In this case, I still have my helper class, but in this case, it is interfaced object and it implements the helper class interface. The usage is shorter and easier than in the previous example. We'll just create instance of the helper class and we'll pass again the print item method as a callback to for each. This works but the question becomes, okay, we have introduced so much code, and why we have introduced so much code? Just to use declarative fashion of uh, implementing our code, that sounds hardly worth the effort, and I absolutely agree. So what is the solution? Well, say hello to the anonymous methods introduced in Delphi 2010.
They introduced a simple Pascal-like syntax. They're very simple to use, and each of them is equivalent to declaration of interface, class, and creation of instance, all of what we just did. Can you imagine doing all of this with a single line of code? How is this possible? Let's take a look at my next project. In this case, I will have exactly the same list with one single small difference. Instead of declaring tmyproc as procedure of object, I will declare it as reference to procedure. That is all. Now I have prepared my generic list for functional programming using anonymous methods. And how I'm going to use it? Let's take a look. Here is a simple example. In this case, I will call for each, but instead of passing a member function, I will declare anonymous method in place. As you can see, the syntax is practically identical to declaring procedure, except I will not give it a name. So far so good, but what's so impressive about it? It had maybe saved a couple of lines compared to traditional programming. Let's take a look at more advanced options. Remember us trying to print only some of the items? Well, here is an example of doing exactly that. Here we have declared a brand new procedure, and for each element, we will check for the specific condition. Again, you may say, it's hardly impressive. What's so good about that? Well, let's continue with the advantages. We can pass also member functions if we wish instead of anonymous procedures. We can also pass global functions such as this one. Again, all of that is great but the advantages are still relatively small. Let's take a look at my next project. We already know how to perform for each in this fashion, but here is where anonymous methods start to shine. Unlike traditional methods, they have access not only to the parameters that are passed to them, but they have access to pretty much any variable that is available in the function that calls them. So in this case, we can access parameters passed to the function. So if you want to print specific items on a specific memo, we can have function like this, and we can call it with different parameters, so different items will be printed. Both parameters will be captured and will be used for the printing. Voila! Obviously, anonymous methods are much more powerful and very different than traditional methods. As we mentioned earlier, anonymous methods are equivalent to interface declaration, class declaration, and making instance of that class. So let's see how this actually can help us in our code. Not only we can declare anonymous methods in place, but we can pass them back and forth as parameters. So in this case, we'll call a member function that will return one of two possible anonymous methods. And which one will be returned will be based on flag. It also will capture the parameters passed to our getPrint items inside those anonymous methods. 
This adds a whole new level of flexibility to our application. We can just call for each, call another member function which will construct the anonymous method we want to execute for each and then for each we'll execute the newly constructed method. Imagine the amount of code which will be required to write the same thing in traditional Delphi. Well here, this is all the code we needed to write. Imagine the power you can get. We already saw how I have declared a reference to procedure. What we didn't cover so far is that in addition to introducing anonymous methods in Delphi 2010, Embarcadero has also declared a ready-to-use generic references to procedures and functions. So this code which I did here is absolutely not necessary. We can simply do this which is equivalent. Here is the Embarcadero declaration of tproc t. They have also declared tfunc, which we can use. If you have been paying attention to the code, you may have noticed that we have totally eliminated the for loop, which is element of traditional procedural programming, but we still do have if statement. An if statement tells the application how to do the things instead of what we need to be done. We can fix that with functional programming by introducing another member method to our list. In this case, it can be called for each where. And it can have two parameters, a procedure to be called for each element matching the condition and a Boolean function which will indicate whether or not the condition is met. In this case, instead of having if statement, we can simply declare what needs to be done and under what condition it needs to be done. Let's see it working. It obviously works. So far, everything is great, but here is the next question. We can extend our existing classes, but what about classes that are already written in Delphi and don't have functional programming capabilities or classes written by somebody else which we want to add functional programming capabilities to? One example, obviously, is a form. It has collection of controls and we would like to access those controls in functional programming fashion. Well, Delphi has solution for that as well. The class helpers are here to rescue us. They allow extending existing classes with functional programming. Let's take a look. In this case, I have declared a TWIN control helper which is a class helper for TWIN control. And for it, I have declared for each control and control of type. Here is the implementation of the two methods. The first one will execute a proc for all of the controls. The second one will execute a proc only for controls matching specific class. And here is example of how I can set all of the controls on the form to false. Let's take a look. This disabled all of the controls on the form. What about if I want to disable only one type of control? Let's say checkboxes only. Here is an example for that. Again, as you can see, instead of telling the application how the thing should be done, we simply say what we want to be done and let it do its job. Furthermore, 
because this is a helper for twin control we can execute it for any other control including other forms in this case we create a brand new form and disable all of the buttons on this second form and here is the code for that creating instance of the form disabling all of the buttons on that other form and showing that other form finally we have one more trick in our back remember that anonymous methods can be constructed inside another method and return by it here i have created a generic class which has generic method which allows us to call any method with one parameter inside any object to demonstrate that in this case i will call for each control of type button the set text buff method which is a method of t control and i will pass hello so all of the buttons will get their captions set to hello this was easy wasn't it well try doing the same thing in conventional delphi with procedural methods it surely is going to take more than a single line of code so the most important lesson of the functional programming up to this point is that this is not so much new way of programming or alternative way of writing code but this is indeed a new way of thinking how code should be done instead of focusing on how the thing should be done we are focusing more and more on what should be done this by itself changes completely the way we think about writing code we already know enough about anonymous methods let's take a look at some of the really huge advantages they can bring to our applications one example is that they can make multi-threading extremely easy and simple anybody who has ever written multi-threaded application probably knows the amount of issues and complexity that can emerge there anything that can simplify it is more than welcome and anonymous methods and functional programming can make multi-threading really fairly simple how it can do that well first it allows for easy synchronization it allows you to focus on the data flow not how the synchronization between multiple threads or data exchange will physically happen it also allows very easy implementation of parallel execution as example through anonymous method implementation of parallel loop as we will see shortly let's take a look at some examples let's take a look at synchronization in this demo i have declared a thread which has pointer to the form in which i will create it in the constructor i will assign this member and inside the execute we will increment a counter and we will be sleeping for one second simulating busy process for the thread once a second we will update the form as you can see our update of the form follows exactly the sequence of execution inside our loop and it also captures and passes through all the necessary local or member variables this way we can pass between the thread and the main thread through the synchronized method any data that needs to be displayed let's run the application as you can see synchronizing between the thread itself and the main thread is extremely simple with anonymous methods this however still requires us to declare a new thread create the instance of it pass pointer to the form and then implement the execute method the question is can we use functional programming to simplify all that 
and the answer is yes. Here I have created a thread which takes as parameter in its constructor anonymous method and then inside its execute it simply keeps calling that anonymous method until the thread is terminated. Now I can create a thread inside the form constructor, use local variables to access them from inside the thread and inside the very same thread I can issue synchronization to the main thread and pass data. So the same code we saw earlier now is only this impressive, isn't it? We demonstrated synchronization with the main thread. Let's take a look at what we can do when we have multiple threads involved. In this demo I have four threads. Each thread will take some data, will do some simulated processing on that data and will pass it to the next thread. In essence creating a queue of threads, each of them simultaneously processing parts of the data. When I click a button I will take the text from edit box, I will report the event that the button has been clicked and I will pass this text to the first thread. This thread will sleep for half a second simulating busy processing then it will add a little bit of text and will pass the new text to another thread. The second thread will do the same, taking some time, adding the new text and pass it to a third thread and so on and so forth until we reach the last thread which after populating everything will report in the context of the main thread. Let's run the application. If I click the button multiple times, after a while I'll start getting the results because it takes a while for the text to process those results. And you can see that we have multiple threads running simultaneously. In this case I have done a slightly modified version of my thread which instead of taking a single function has a list of anonymous methods, critical section to protect that list, wake event, every time we execute one of those anonymous methods we are adding them to the list which is guarded by the critical section and we will signal the event. In our execute loop we'll enter the critical section, check if there is something waiting to be executed, if so we'll execute it and then we'll wait for wake event. So let's look again at the way we are using the threads. As you can see we have a lot of advantages. Instead of describing how the synchronization between the different threads will be done and how the data will be passed through, we are instead just describing the sequence of how the data should be processed. Thread 1 processes, thread 2 processes, thread 3 processes, thread 4 processes, automatically passing the data between them without the need of using critical sections or any other synchronization. All of that will happen automatically due to the capability of anonymous methods to capture local member variables. Since each member variable is created in the stack when the corresponding function is called, it will not introduce any multi-threading collisions and it will safely be processed between all of the threads. This significantly reduces the size of the code and improves the performance. In addition, following this code is much easier than following the enormous amount of code necessary to synchronize the work of those four threads with traditional programming. Finally, let's take a look how we can implement parallel multi-threaded for loop 
processing using functional programming in Delphi. In this example, I have array of data and inside a loop, I want to start individual threads processing each individual item in the array. We assume that we'll be doing something computationally intensive here. For this, I have created another object called execution. In this object, I will be able to add new anonymous methods for execution. Each one of them will be executed in separated thread. And at the end, I will be able to wait for all of the threads to complete so I can get and display the results. Here is our implementation of the executor. As you can see, it is fairly simple. It has a member class inheriting from thread. It has a queue of threads. Every time I want to start execution, I will be adding one new thread to the list. And when I want to wait for completion, I will simply loop through all of the threads and make sure every single one has been completed. With this simple class, now I can really implement parallel thread execution. Let's run the application. If I click, I will see that immediately multiple threads are created and I get some strange and bizarre result. Why I got such a bizarre result? I should have gotten unique value for each of the elements of the array. Instead, in this case, all of them became zero. On other multi-core systems, we will get slightly different random results. The reason for that is one of the limitations of anonymous methods in Delphi. In other languages, such as C++, you can specify whether variables available in the context of the function, such as local variables, parameters, or member variables of the class, are captured by context or by value. Unfortunately, in Delphi, everything gets captured by reference. There are, however, solutions for that. Let's take a look at how we can solve this problem. Solution number one is displayed right here. We can use a nested function to call execute for our anonymous method. And in the for loop, we'll be calling the nested function. Let's try this solution. As you can see, we got the expected result. This solution, however, is a bit ugly and a bit more difficult to read since we have to jump back and forth between the for loop and the nested function we are calling. There is, however, alternative solution, which is quite clear. Here is a good solution to the problem. Since we can return anonymous methods from inside functions, we can write generic function which will be able to capture any type of context we want. In this case, I have created a generic function which will be able to capture variable of type t. And it is pretty straightforward. We will just create anonymous method. Inside it, we'll call another anonymous method passing the parameter we want to capture by value. This will ensure that this parameter is captured by value instead of by reference. So here is our modified loop. Here we are stating that we want to capture integer variable. We are specifying which variable we want to capture. And here is our procedure that will receive this variable and then we'll use it locally inside the anonymous method. Let's run this application. Here is our result. It is exactly what we were expecting. Finally, let's take a look at what else we can use the anonymous methods for. Since Embarcadero decided to implement anonymous methods as interfaces, this gives us the interesting possibility of implementing smart pointers in Delphi. 
at the moment automatic reference counting support is available only for Android and iOS versions of Delphi and if you are working in Windows or Mac you still have to delete each object you are creating smart pointers automatically will delete any pointer assigned to them whenever there are no more pointers pointing to that object let's see how we can implement this functionality with anonymous methods since declaration of anonymous method is equivalent of declaration of interface we can inherit from the method a generic interface for objects once when we have created interface we can declare a class that will implement that interface we will declare a field of type t constructor which will take parameter of type t and initialize the field and since anonymous method have a hidden member function called invoke we can implement this function to return our field this function is executed anytime somebody tries to execute the anonymous method let's take a look at how we can use this we'll declare smart pointer for these strings as a local variable create instance of that smart pointer and pass it a newly created string list once when we have done that every time we refer to strings we'll execute the anonymous method calling implicitly the invoke function and this will return pointer to our string list so any member of the t strings will be accessible here we'll add few strings and then we'll display the list as you can see we're using it exactly as we would have used the t strings at the end we don't need to free the object since the smart pointer will go out of scope and it being interface will automatically be freed internally freeing the hosted object let's run the application as you can see everything works as expected this concludes our session my name again is Bojan Mitov, the president of Mitov Software. You can see my email here, mitov at mitov.com. Our website is www.mitov.com. We offer a wide range of products, including Video Lab, Video Processing Library, Audio Lab, Audio Processing Library, Signal Lab, Digital Signal Processing Library, Vision Lab, Computer Vision Library, Plot Lab, Data Visualization Library, Instrument Lab, Visual Instrumentation Library, Intelligence Lab, Artificial Intelligence Library. We are nearing the release of Logic Lab, Boolean Logic Library, Animation Lab, Universal Animation Library. We also offer Visual Live Binding, Universal Visual Live Binding Library, and OpenWire Studio, a standalone graphical development environment. We also maintain two open source libraries, the OpenWire library and the iGDI Plus library, a Delphi friendly GDI Plus library. Thank you for listening and now it's time for questions and answers. Yes, hello guys. Hello. Hello. Thanks Hello. again for another great session. That was that was interesting. And Boyan. Well, you're welcome. And Boyan, meet Jim McKeith. Howdy, Boyan. Jim, meet Boyan. Hey. I'm a longtime fan. <laughs> I always enjoy your. Thank you. Thank you very much. I always, always, my mind's always like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you could do that. That's so cool. <laughs> oh. And for everybody who's on here, the the products at Meetoff Software, all the video, audio, all of the stuff, uh, the lab work lab stuff the components are great just take it from me take a look at them uh they're awesome thank you david i really appreciate it and jim why don't you go ahead and uh 
help with the questions while I fall asleep. Over okay. Here, <laughs> Not because of you, boy, and because of the. Yeah, earth. I knew. I knew it was my session. Oh. No, 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 not at all. Uh, the first question, which of course is the most popular question of the day, is where is your example code going to be available? Uh, I will post it on my blog, and my blog is available also on our. I mean, you can find it from my website under the support. Uh, uh, under the support menu option on our uh, website. I'm sorry, I didn't put the block uh, here, but this page already got rather crowded. Uh, it will be available on the block. Labpacks.blogspot.com, so, right? That is correct. Okay. Um, yeah, this first one, boy, and we were I was discussing with Jim. I think the Ralph one at 420, Jim. Yes. Uh, oh, yes, don't anonymous methods open up security vulnerabilities with increased access? Uh, don't interfaces open security vulnerab vulnerabilities? Don't, uh, uh, don't uh, functions open yeah. security vulnerability? I mean, uh, anonymous method actually is probably arguably more secure for a very simple reason. If you use a normal function, somebody fairly easily uh, assuming by any chance they get a debug uh, built of your application, uh, they can even find the names of the functions that are being called. With anonymous methods, even that is not available, even if somebody gets by any chance a debug version of your application. I don't want to even mention how much more secure actually it is if it is a release version instead. I mean, it, it, it makes it significantly more difficult to hack into the application than uh, if you're doing it with a traditional method. Yeah, but, but, and Ralph, maybe if you have some thing that triggered in your mind, I, w I was thinking the same thing. I mean, these are, these are local inside your program. They have no name. Uh, I mean, the code is code, of course, but uh, you've got some other insight, Ralph, you want to add to, add to the conversation. That, that's good, too. I was kind of looking, wondering myself. Go ahead, Jim. Sorry. Um, so this, a suggestion is with all the code that you were showing, which everybody loves code, uh, if you collapse the panels on the left and right, then there's less scrolling involved. So that's the auto-hide of the structure object yeah. inspector. I, I, I have to apologize. This session is not of the quality uh, I wanted it to be, but unfortunately, uh, these sessions were done under extreme pressure uh, within uh, record a record small amount of time uh, and uh, I mean I, I did just my best to get uh, as much material and as good material as I can within the extremely limited time I was able to spare. I, I really have to apologize to everybody that the quality is not as good as it should be. No, no, no. In, I, including, 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 I mean, thinking for things like panel sizes and stuff. Like no, that. The, con the content though was great. Yeah. Uh, I, that's you. just, some people like to pin, unpin the project manager and everything else. Uh, yeah, there's sometimes a, I do, sometimes I don't. There's a lot of comments here of, wow, this is the clearest explanation of functional programming I've ever heard. Thanks. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, just everybody is very, uh, very impressed. Lots of uh, very positive uh, comments and compliments here. Yeah, I guess, actually, I'm scanning through the questions. I think the rest of the questions are just uh, very much thank you very much. Well, oh, wait, here's one. From Keith, yeah, down at the bottom. Maybe or oh, go yep. ahead. There's no one down there. Okay. Uh, so I was going to ask if the copy semantics were by value or by reference. Yeah, uh, I already explained. Uh, member variables are passed with the same rules as uh, any parameter in a function. So the, uh, not passed, captured. So the proper term is actually captured. So anything that gets captured. Uh, that gets passed to a normal function by value gets captured by value. Anything that gets uh, passed to a function by uh, reference, like uh, typical example are uh, interfaces and objects, uh, gets captured uh, by reference. So unless, unless, of course, in normal function you can add modifiers, unfortunately uh, in Delphi, in the current implementation of uh, uh, function of uh, anonymous methods, there are no, there is no way to specify how with modifiers how you want to capture something. So you're following the default rules. So the short answer is integers, uh, 
uh, uh, well, not strings, but in, in, well, strings actually are passed by value of them. So integers, strings, uh, floating point uh, variables, all of those guys, uh, uh, records are passed by by value. Uh, things like interfaces, uh, objects. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, th those are the ones I can think of at the moment. Those are captured uh, by uh, reference, by, by pointer methods. So that's, that's the short answer. Now here's a question from Keith. Uh, if there's a four core processor and the code spawns three threads, will each thread be assigned a different core automatically or does the program have to make that assignment? Well, that's actually out of uh, the scope of this particular uh, session. However, that actually depends on the operating system and the settings of the operating system. Different versions of Windows will behave slightly different, but by default, each thread will be assigned to a separated processor uh, unless, and, and we can get into more details on that. By default, by default, the short answer is by default, everything gets assigned to a new processor if a processor is available at that time. If all of the processors are busy doing other things, yeah, the same processor will be reused. It depends on the load. Uh, the more complex answer is that on top of that, there are ways in modern operating systems and in newer versions of Windows to specify that you want to reuse a particular processor, especially in the so-called NUMA, non-uniform um, uh, infrastructures. But that's that's that subject of a totally different session. Okay. Interesting subject, but <laughs> it requires a full session just on this subject. Yep. Great presentation. Any suggestions on places to learn more about functional programming in Delphi? <laughs> uh, 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 if, if somebody uh, finds the answer of this question, I would be very happy uh, uh, to, to learn it. I have learned all of this myself. I have invented a lot of the stuff which I'm showing here uh, are my own inventions, my own discoveries. I have never seen anybody else in before uh, ever to do something similar. So, uh, d d and I personally believe that we are just scratching the surface. We are just entering a brand new era of uh, software development. And, and, and even beyond, but that's again subject of a totally different uh, type of session. Uh, I think the way we program and the way we develop uh, applications and the way we architect them and even the way we think about uh, programming will absolutely change and uh, functional programming and what I demonstrated are just the first the first tiptoeing into the area and I think that pretty much nobody in the world yet uh, knows the full extent of where this thing is going to go that's that's all I can say so but any anybody who can suggest any literature I'll be interested However, I, I have found very little and very misleading. I mean, most of the literature I have found is very misleading. They, 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 they are still thinking in procedural and algorithmic way of programming. And it's the same as when object-oriented programming came along. People are still thinking in structural programming and algorithms and writing procedures and all of that. And it took many, many years for people to totally grasp that it is something absolutely new and you have to throw out of the window anything you know to this point and start from scratch and, uh, and think completely different uh, to, to fully utilize it. So uh, I am not aware of any good material yet. Maybe it will be some years before uh, all of that starts to materialize. Back in 2009 or 2008, Craig Stuntz did a video or code rage session on functional programming in Delphi that was more conceptual than anything, but he had, I'll post the link here that you guys can check it out as well. Might be some more inspiration in that one. Do you think you could write a future like C++ thread with this technology? Uh, I'm not familiar with the term. I'm really sorry. Uh, the future is usually a uh, the idea. It's something you declare, but it doesn't actually uh, initialize until you, in some time in the future before you need it. Until someone, some, until it gets a value? Mm -hmm. Yeah, until it gets a value. Yeah, so yeah. Like future, uh, absolutely. Future value Absol or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I, uh, I'm sorry, I, for, for whatever reason, 
uh, I was not familiar with the term. The answer is yes. Uh, actually, I mean, if if the rule again, in order the thread to be allocated, you 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 can very easily create an empty shell which is going to hold the thread, which is going to be a very small uh, object, and then pass the rule under which that object will be uh, under which that the internal thread will be created so the infrastructure for that would be extremely simple and straightforward and that rule can be anonymous method so yes you can use functional programming for that absolutely what about speed for each element in your list you are calling a function to process it instead of the processing just being in line in the method is this ever a consideration let me think about that uh, for a moment, it will it will add a function call overhead, and uh, yes, this is overhead on one side. On another side, in this particular case, there will be some overhead. However, personally, my experience is that uh, the simplification of the code, the overall simplification of the code, uh, actually will lead you to use. Uh, much more optimized on a higher level code. And as we know probably all of us from experience, the higher level optimizations are the one uh, which uh, pay off better. So uh, what we're describing here is a very local optimization, the same as rewriting a very small loop in assembly language in the old days. That rarely pays off significantly. You can, you can squeeze a few fractions of the percentage uh, improvement of performance. On another side, by simplifying the code, you immediately start seeing where the bottlenecks of the code. So you actually gain the advantage of optimizing your code on global scale. So what I'm saying is, yes, you will probably pay a small penalty in a, uh, in a price of a single function call in that particular location, but you will gain the advantage, number one, of the global optimization. Number two, which I didn't have time to cover in the session, is that once when you start developing in functional programming, the odd thing is that you can very, very easily enable that for each to be actually multi-threaded. So suddenly, at, with a flip of a switch, you can enable a whole huge portion of your application uh, to be multi-threaded with uh, minimal penalties. And we are actually uh, using some of that functionality in our uh, libraries nowadays. So, uh, yes, you will pay the penalty of uh, one additional function call. You will uh, gain right here uh, the possibility of easily turning your application uh, multi-threaded and improving the performance by the number of cores you may have in your system. So <laughs> uh, that's a fair trade-off, I would say. Smart pointers magic is invoke, right? If we write correct. in cook, correct? Okay. No, I, just, I just said correct, yeah, sorry. If we write in cook instead of invoke, smart pointers might won't run, am I correct? Uh, the code will simply not compile because if you remember in the code that was a class implementing interface and since the interface inherits from the anonymous method declaration uh, the, 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 the class will not compile the compiler will say invoke method is missing is not implemented I forgot the exact compiler message but it is like invoke method is not uh, implemented so mm -hmm. the class will not compile, not only it will not run, it will not even compile. Good. <laughs> if it's not going to work, I don't want it to compile. <laughs> uh, what about supporting evented async synchronous I.O., a la Node.js, only without the single core limitations, using some of these language features? Uh, can we repeat the question I've, uh, I failed to follow it exactly? What about supporting evented or asynchronous I.O. similar to Node.js? Well, that, that's in essence equivalent. Uh, evented I.O. is uh, basically driven by a separated thread, and I actually effectively demonstrated it uh, with, uh, one of the, uh, with one of the examples. I forgot which number example. But basically, yes, you pass, you pass the result 
you, you pass it as anonymous method. And yes, we do it. Uh, actually, realistically speaking, most of the examples I demonstrated, they are exactly a async, uh, async uh, trading, I'm sorry, uh, most of the trading examples which I demonstrated, th those are exactly examples of async I.O. per se. Okay. Demonstrated with a simple thread. But hardware or thread, uh, thread is hardware driven as well. The CPU uh, does an operation and you get the result of that operation at the later point. So this is practically, for all practical purposes, equivalent to to async I.O. So I demonstrated it. Yeah, it, it's, it's used all the time. All right. So it's uh, two after the hour. We have one last quick question. Uh, Ralph wants to know if you do subcontracting. Apparently, he's pretty impressed. Uh, thank you. We do subcontracting. That is correct.